Hello friends, in this video we will see how to draw an ellipse by rectangle method and it is also known as oblong method. So let's see the problem statement first. Draw an ellipse having major axis 120mm and minor axis 80mm. So with the help of these two things we can draw an ellipse by rectangle method. So let's begin. First up, we will draw a perfect horizontal line having a length which is 120 mm. And then let's take a midpoint of this line. After that, we will draw a vertical line passing through this midpoint which will have a length 80 mm. Now let's give the names to the endpoint of these lines A, B, C, and D. So here AB is our major axis and CD is the minor axis. Let's name the intersection of these two axes as O which is the center of an ellipse. Now the next step is to form a rectangle and to do that we have to draw vertical lines from A and B and the horizontal lines from C and D. So let's do that. So first of all we will draw a vertical line from A and then we will draw the perfect horizontal line from C then the vertical line from B and finally the horizontal line from D. Make sure that what you get at the end is a perfect rectangle of a size 120 mm by 80 mm. Once we get a rectangle we will name the corners of the rectangles as E F, G and H. Now you can see we have the four small rectangles over here but right now we are going to focus on the topmost left hand side rectangle which is E A O C and in that we are going to divide its smaller and the longer edge into equal and same number of parts. First of all let's divide AE into four equal parts and then divide AO also into four equal parts. Take a note that while dividing AE and AO you make sure that you are dividing them into same number of parts. What does it mean? If you try to divide AE into five equal parts then you supposed to divide AO also into five equal parts. Once we get the points on these edges, we will name those points as 1, 2, 3 on AO and 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash on AE. If you remember, I told you in one of my videos that to remember the things what to do next, you just have to understand that whatever you are going to plot, you have to use it. So here, as we have plotted the points 1, 2, 3, as well as 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, we are going to use them. But you must remember how to use them. So here, in order to remember the next step, let's say that we are going to connect these points with a point which is opposite to them. So here, the point which is opposite to 1 dash, 2 dash and 3 dash is C and the point opposite to 1, 2, 3 is D. So we are going to draw the lines from point C and D which will pass through these points which we have just plotted. So let's draw the line from C which connects with 1 dash, C 2 dash and C 3 dash. Similarly, as I said, we have to connect the point 1, 2, 3 with D. So let's connect D with 1 and then extend it further so that it will intersect with a line C1 dash and name that point of intersection as P1. Similarly, draw a line from D which is passing through 2 and intersecting at C2 dash and we will call that point as P2. And finally, you might have guessed what to do next. Yes, we have to draw a line D3 and we will extend it till it intersect with C3 dash 
and we'll call that point of intersection as P3. Now we have seen that we have got the points P1, P2, P3. These are going to be the points on the ellipse. So here we have got the quarter portion of an ellipse and we will get the points in remaining three quarters by using the rule of symmetry. So with the help of this P1, P2 and P3, let's get the other point. So we will draw the vertical line from P1, P2 and P3. The shape which we will have above the major axis, the same shape we are going to have below the major axis. That means this ellipse is symmetrical about major axis. So we will take the distance of point P1 from the major axis and then we will transfer that distance below the major axis by cutting an arc and we will call that point as P1 dash. Next, we will take the distance of point P2 from the major axis and we will transfer that distance below the major axis by cutting an arc from the major axis and we will call that point as P2 dash. And next, we will take the distance of point P3 from the major axis and in the same way we will transfer it below the major axis and we will call that point P3 dash. So now we have got points to the lower side of the major axis but the points to the right hand side of the minor axis are yet to plot. So once again we will use the points P1, P2, P3 and the symmetry to plot the points to the right hand side of the minor axis. So to do that we will draw the horizontal lines from P1, P2 and P3. So let's do that. And then we will use the symmetry to plot the points to the right hand side of the minor axis. So take the distance of point P1, this time the horizontal distance from the minor axis and we will transfer that distance to the right hand side of the minor axis on the same line so as to get the point opposite to P1. Next we will take the horizontal distance of P2 from minor axis and we will transfer the same distance to the right hand side of the minor axis to plot the next point. You might have guessed now what we are going to do next is to take the distance of P3 from the minor axis and transfer it to the right hand side of the minor axis to get the next point. Let's name these points as P4, P5, P6. And finally only one quarter is remained where we want to plot the points and this time we are going to take a help of points P4, P5 and P6. So here we will repeat the same procedure of transferring the distances by considering the symmetry about the major axis. So we will transfer these distances from top to the bottom and then we will get remaining points at the bottom side of the major axis and we will call them as P4 dash, P5 dash and P6 dash. So here we got all the points and now it's time to connect all these points with a smooth curve. So once we connect all these points with smooth curve, we get an ellipse.